after covering the sharp and double-edged McCutcheon variation in the previous video. Today we are going to continue our exploration of the 4 bishop g5 line against the classical French and cover another fourth move by black for bishop to e7. So after e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, knight f6, bishop to g5, in the previous video we have examined the move bishop to b4 in quite some detail, leading to the so-called McCutcheon variation, while the topic of this video will be an alternative bishop move, the logical move bishop to e7, dealing with this uh, annoying pin on the knight on f6, and uh, asking uh, white what they want to do with the pressure on the e4 pawn, which is once again renewed. The drawback of this move is that it allows a very sharp option for white, uh, which is the so-called Aleka and Chatard attack, uh, which we will get to a little bit later. And the problem is that many uh, players who do play for bishop to g5 play it precisely because they want these sharp variations, and they are very likely to know the themes and ideas uh, associated with, with this sharp variation. So what white should do here? White should play e5 and resolve the tension in the center by advancing the, the pawn. And here, uh, as usual, black should not jump forward, or actually I should retrace it. In the McCutcheon variation, black was jumping forward, but there the bishop was on b4 and there was some pin. But here, if you jump with knight to e4, it makes no sense because white can take on e7, queen takes e7, knight takes e4, there is no pin, d takes e4, and now queen e2 will ha happen and this pawn on e4 is eternally weak. If queen b4 seemingly winning one of the pawns, it's not a problem, you play c3 and the queen defends everything. And eventually white will be able to get on this pawn and just have a bet better position. So, in contrast to the McCutcheon where knight e4 was a thing, here black should go knight f to d7. And here, uh, one of the reasons why white put the bishop on g5 uh, is that in many cases, if uh, white manages to exchange this bishop, which is a defender of these dark squares, then some ideas associated with knight b5, knight to d6, knight to c7 can appear. Now, of course, uh, these ideas shouldn't be overestimated. It is not, uh, you know, you can't just, oh, I'm exchanging the bishop and I'm better. There are some nuances, but the general strategic, strategic idea will revolve around the exchange of these two bishops. And actually, bishop e7 immediately was played in some uh, high-profile games. And after queen to e7, White plays f4 uh, in order to reinforce the e5 pawn in the anticipation of the move c5. And now black has to spend the tempo on a6, which uh, often will happen in these variations, because if you play c5, then knight d5 already is quite unpleasant, because once again, you have very big weaknesses on the dark squares, and knight is coming to either c7 or d6, uh, which is not very desirable, of course. So a6 has to be played to control the b5 square and knight, uh, prevent this knight to b5 idea. And after knight f3, c5, knight to e2 is played, uh, trying to preserve the center, intending to play c3, holding on to the center as much as possible. Um, on the other hand, black probably wants to play uh, uh, knight c6, they want to expand on the queen side, maybe at some point play f6 and undermine the center. And uh, this leads to a more positional, more typical French struggle, that is kind of more characteristic of other variations. Uh, most white players who play for bishop g5 don't necessarily prefer to go for something like this. But if you are intending to play something like this as black, you need to be aware that this move 6 bishop to e7 is also an option. Apart from the main move that leads to the so-called Aleka and Chatard variation, and that is this move h4. So what this move does is, okay, it first of all protects the bishop at least once so that it is not hanging, or at least that it's not hanging uh, in itself. The bishop is not fully protected because black can take it and take the pawn. But uh, as we will see, this is kind of dangerous because the idea is to, if black takes on g5, to take with the h pawn and open up this rook on h1. And white is ready to sacrifice a pawn to get, to get that going. So now, of course, uh, bishop g5 and then taking this pawn is by far the, the main move in the position and the one we will analyze later. But before we get there, I do want to talk a little bit about, hey, what happens if black doesn't do that? Like, because, you know, many players, especially at lower levels, they are like, I make a sacrifice my opponent has to accept, but that's not necessarily always the case. So here, there are several things black can try and that have been played in some games. So, first of all, black can just try to play c5 immediately, 
like the typical French break. It at the moment where um, White hasn't yet played f4, so this e5 pawn is a little bit exposed, and uh, Black is trying to crumble the center or destroy the center. Alas, the problem of this move is that it once again weakens these dark squares, and that White can ex uh, exploit this by playing bishop to e7. And now once again, if you play queen takes e7, knight to b5 is highly problematic because of the everything that I have mentioned earlier. So king to e7 has to be played. And uh, in this particular case, uh, jumping with knight to b5 doesn't have particular point. I mean, okay, you can plant the knight to d6, but with the king that is not on e8, it is no longer a check. Knight c7 is no longer a threat. So here it is a bit, actually a little bit less powerful, and in the meantime, Black can maybe like play cd4, maybe threaten knight to e5. So it's a very big question whether we will be able to maintain this knight on d6 whatsoever. So that is why f4 makes more sense, uh, re reinforcing this e5 pawn. And now if, for example, black tries to do something like queen b6 to kind of increase the pressure on d4 and uh, pressure on b2, then white has this motif of knight a4, which if you recall my video on uh, what every player should know uh, about the French defense, it is featured there. So white is attacking uh, uh, the queen and also defending the b2 pawn. And if, for example, queen to a5, we play c3, uh, the center is secure, we can play b4 at some point, and uh, yeah, maybe at some point we can also even consider taking on c5, and this should be pretty reasonable for white. Uh, and if black tries destroying the center immediately with cd4, CD we play queen d4 somewhat surprisingly, because uh, you might wonder why doesn't this allow knight c6, but yeah, but we here we play queen to d2, and we have a standard French position, but with the king stuck on e7, and also with uh, us having exchanged our uh, like bad bishop, dark square bishop, which is kind of restricted by these pawns, and having weakened these squares. So this is a favorable version of the standard French structure for white. Uh, and if black tries to play queen to b6, uh, which is what they have to go for, because now b2 is under the attack, there is a tension between the queens, white has to take queen b6, knight b6, h5. And in this position, this should be relatively a pleasant endgame for white, because we have a lot of space on the king side. Uh, we have some control over the d4 square, this bishop is still bad. But, well, but it's not so 100% clear, if you recall my video on the on the everything you should know about the French defense, these endgames are not so clear cut, because black king is kind of nicely now placed in center, f6 is a thing. And uh, yeah, uh, there is a very, one very high profile game between played between uh, legendary English grandmaster John Nunn and uh, Yasser Seravan. It was played in 1992 uh, after h6, knight b5, knight c6, knight f3, bishop b7, b3. Uh, eventually, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give it in the notes, but eventually the game ended in a draw. Although I think that in this resulting position here, for example, white still has better chances, uh, more space, uh, nice control over the d4 square, still better bishop and so on and so forth, but okay, the players decided to agree to draw there. But yeah, I mean, if Black wants to play like this and they want to end up in an inferior uh, end game, then I mean, so be it, like sometimes, you know, it's it's not always possible, you know, if, if Black uh, doesn't want a sharp, sharp fight and direct fight, then sometimes there is nothing White can do about it, especially in these four bishop g5 lines, which are maybe less forcing than some other lines. Still, I don't think it should be counted as a bad outcome of the opening, because we are basically playing on one goal for two results, and we are never worse. So, yeah, even though six, c4, 5 might be like, you know, appealing at maybe some higher levels, because it's like a direct attempt to equalize, uh, Black can't be too ambitious there, objectively, and besides, I wouldn't expect many opponents to, to know that they have to capture with the king here, up to a certain rating point. The other way of uh, uh, declining the gift is the move a6, trying to control the d5 square and preparing c5. Uh, but here, we have some time, because there is no tension in the center. So here we can go back to our favorite queen maneuver, queen to g4. If you uh, check my video on the Mekachuan variation, you will remember that this is one of the most common uh, maneuvers in the French defense, especially in, in, in when the center is closed with e5 and d4. Now, now we are kind of threatening to take on e7 and take on g7. So Black has to do something about it. Uh, for example, king f8, uh, this was tried in some games, defending the g7 pawn, but now white can play knight f3, uh, defending the knight, uh, let's say, behind the queen, uh, so queen is kind of active here, c5, and now white can play d takes c5, 
destroying the pawn chain, but now e5 is kind of protected, and yeah, it's kind of not very pleasant for black to like, I mean, okay, they can take knight to c5, but then we'll castle long, and we have a very pleasant position with the king being misplaced, and if knight c6, we play queen f4, uh, we defend this pawn, and the fact that this queen is here, and not, for example, on d1, makes all difference in the world, the king is very insecure here, and uh, yeah, we very have we have a very favorable version of the standard French structures. We will play castles long, maybe bishop d3 or something, rook h3, and in general try to attack the king on the king's side and use our space advantage guaranteed by this pawn on e5. Okay, g6 probably is also not ideal because it uh, I mean it weakens the king's side extremely uh, much, and after any move knight f3, probably this is also a bit too much for, for black to handle, which is why probably the best best move is the move bishop to g5. Although here. White is kind of spoiled for choice. Uh, H takes g5 makes more sense to, like, similarly as in the Alec and Chatard variation, to open up the h file. Although an argument could be made for this endgame, queen g5, queen g5, h5, because we, similarly you have an open h file, you have nice uh, space control on the queen side and on the king side, sorry, and you should be pretty good. Uh, hg5 is, I think, a bit more natural, keeping the queens on the board c5, trunking in the center, and here white has to kinda remember some things. Like, first of all, g6 looks very attractive, but here black has a very tricky resource, they can play f5 here. And yeah, this was played in more than 200 games uh, in the database, so it's definitely not an impossible move to find. The point is that if you take Ampassan, that knight f6 happens, and if you move the queen, then maybe h6 happens, and kinda the king side is suddenly pretty blocked. Um, so, yeah, this, this, this is probably not the best, and I think the, the better move here is to simply take this pawn d takes e5. It looks a little bit crazy because we are losing our center and e5 is hanging, but after knight to e5, queen g3, knight b to c6, we play castles. And this position is actually quite good for white, um, because we have the h file and black can basically never castle because they will just get like mated or whatever. Maybe. Uh, maybe a four first, whatever. It's extremely dangerous to do so. So, so they they can do that. And otherwise, we want to play f4, and then f5, and simply open up the position. Um, and the fact that we have given up our center and and that our c5 pawn is weak is not so relevant. It's kind of not so easy for black to develop. Um, and uh, yeah, our pieces are quite active. And instead of controlling the center with the pawns, we are controlling it with the pieces, which is actually a bit more effective. So this also doesn't inspire too much confidence for, for, for black, although once again, white does need to know some stuff, like it's important not to hurry with g6, f5, and if you are black, you might try to catch your opponent unaware, because after this move, I don't think the situation is clear at all. Alright, so what else is there? Black can also play h6 here, it has been played in some games, and um, this might actually be like, if you are trying to refuse this sacrifice, uh, refuse the... Uh, the Alec and Chatard attack, this might be the best option. Why still has kind of spoiled for choice here. Like, first of all, taking on e7 is very, very, very logical. Um, as you might recall, this was possible even without h4, uh, h6 included, and with h4, h6, you might make an argument that this is more beneficial for white because black made a move on the king side where we will attack, we, uh, white has, get, uh, has ob obtained the h3 square for the rook, and so on. Um, so after bishop e7, queen e7, we play f4. Uh, I think it's the best way simply to reinforce the center and to basically prepare the, 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 the running of the pawns on the king side. You can play something like queen g4, castles f4. You can also play knight to f3, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the most critical here because white's setup with h4 is very aggressive and now you are suddenly switching to some more positional stuff. Um, after castles, queen d2, c5, d takes c5, Queen c5, our e5 is a little bit, like, let's say, exposed. For example, castles, knight to c6. And now, in this circumstance, like, we would very much like to play maybe g4, g5, but we need to worry about this pawn on e5. Uh, if the, and that's why I think it's better to have the pawn on f4 to protect it, uh, rather than the knight. I, I think it's just, we can afford to, 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 to spend some time to, to, to move some more pawns, because the position is very closed, and, like, black can't just open up the center and exploit, quote-unquote, waiting development. So play might continue here, for example, castles. This is dangerous because we just go g4, and if c5 will gladly take, d takes c5, queen c5, and now g5. 
once again we are only moving the pawns but black's position is already very dangerous because we will just open up the king and basically checkmate uh, it's very easy for us to bring some pieces into the game and in the meantime where is black's counterplay like it's not so easy to get to this king uh maybe maybe a6 not yet determining the the position of this king and preparing c5 is better but after a while, something like knight f3 we put the knight before behind the pawn c5 queen d2 here we are not taking because once again we don't want like we are not having a clear object of the attack yet so we are kind of waiting to see what black will do um of course if now black castles then we'll play g4 or, or take on c5 and play g4 uh, if they play cd4, knight d4, knight c6, now we play castles long because now black doesn't have. So if we go, for example, if if we go queen d2 and they play some move, I don't know whatever, uh, but some move, I don't know, uh, g6. And if we go castles long, then black can keep the option of playing c4, playing b5, b4. So if they play cd4, then uh, this option of c4, b5 has been removed, and we can safely castle long. So this is a common motif that we will also see in some other variations, especially in the in the Steinitz variation of the of the classical variation. So here we are kind of waiting to see what, we, what Black will do. So Black can play knight c6, and now we don't want to castle because then c4 comes, and this looks very tricky for 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 White. I think like g4, b5, f5, b4, knight f4. This looks very double-edged. These uh, pawns are very threatening, and I'm not sure who is attacking whom here, especially because this king has not yet castled. So, um, here actually it's kind of smart to play knight to e2. This is a very semi-waiting move. We are basically reinforcing the d4 pawn, playing c3, and still not yet determining what we will do with our king. Now this might look crazy, like why am I not playing bishop to d3? But if you play bishop to d3 and black plays something like, I don't know, b5, then we, we, you can, like if you go castles, then c4 will come. If you play knight to e2, then your bishop is trapped. So. Even though this is violating the principle of moving the same piece twice and um, not developing the other piece, there is a very concrete reasoning for that. And the fact that this center is very closed, that position is very stable, allows for such liberties uh, in the opening. And now b5 is played. Uh, this is a very thematic move in all sorts of uh, French defenses. Uh, Black simply expands on the queen side, prepares bishop to b7, once again prepares some uh, pushes on the queen side. And now finally we play g4, still waiting to see what black will do. Uh, this was played twice by my compatriot and the strongest Croatian player, Ivan Šaric. Um, the center is once again very, very secure. Uh, it's not so easy for black to get some f6 or to take here and such because their king is also in the center. If they play castles short, then we will gladly attack. If they play bishop to b7, we can play c3 or we can continue waiting with some move like rook d1 or whatever. Bishop g2 even comes into consideration, bishop h3. So it's sort of a waiting game. Each side is waiting for the other to determine the position of their king. And then they want to attack on that side. Um, uh, it's a very complex position still, but I do think white has uh, very reasonable chances uh, due to the stability of the center and this king side space advantage, which might be more relevant than the queen side space advantage. Although, of course, it is very much a game, and yeah, uh, you have to play well even from this point. Now, with all that being said, um, going back to move uh, 7 here after h6, white can also play bishop to e3, not exchanging the bishops, but trying to emphasize that with this operation, uh, we have gotten the bishop to e3 with, uh, while forcing black to spend the tempo on h6. And this bishop e3 is kind of fighting against c5. Uh, note, by the way, that bishop uh, h4 loses immediately to queen g4 and queen g7. So that's not a good idea. Or And if bishop g5, you have f4. So that's really not good for black. Um, so c5 has to be played, striking in the center immediately. And now we go back to the standard idea of queen g4 that is so present in the French defense. And now black has to deal with this threat. And uh, yeah, once again, king f8 and g6 are all very legitimate ways of dealing with this. But if king f8, uh, I mean, the, it will lead to very similar play as, as the main line. And since this is much more rare than g6, I would rather refrain from covering it in detail. So let's see how play continues. So we play g6 here. After knight f3, which is which has been played in some games, 
Black can play c d4, bishop d4, knight c6. And I really don't like this for white because black will either take on e5 or eliminate our strong dark square bishop. We would be, we don't mind exchanging it for the bishop, but down not really want to do so and exchange it for the knight. That's why here probably better move is dc5. Uh, it's similar to the other line. So we are allowing the deconstruction of our center, but after knight uh, to e5, uh, queen to g3, we are uh, aiming to castle uh, quickly and then control the center with the pieces. For example, knight b to c6 castles. We play for f4. Um, the king said is a little bit weak because of this g6 move. And uh, of course, there's a long fight ahead of us, but it might, might not be. We might have the initiative here. Uh, the problem here is also that after something like bishop c5, bishop c5, knight c5, if black decides to play uh, against the c5, we always have h5, and something similar happens after knight to c5, h5. So, yeah, if we take a look at back here, maybe 7 bishop e3 is even more ambitious than, than, than taking on e7. Although, yeah, I think both moves are kind of okay for white. Like, um, I, I think white objective, we should be able to retain the advantage in all these lines if black refuses to get take the pawn but it's it's a complex game it's definitely a complex game and some very you know precise decision making like being willing to take on c5 being willing to to give up the e5 pawn is is sometimes required and yeah it you know it requires you to be uh, enjoy hand to enjoy these positions with the initiative and unbalanced positions uh, with non-standard pawn structures and with a lot of tactical possibilities for both sides uh, that's the fate of four bishop g5 player uh, and three knight f6 uh, French players. Going back to the move six, like as we have seen, even though all the moves c5, a6, and h6, I mean they are not all that silly and they are definitely like playable. Uh, I think they are um, if we go fully, fully objective, we're not necessarily the best or the critical. And definitely the you know as they, as even Capablanca used to say, the best way of refuting the gambit is to accept it. Probably bishop g5 is the high, the critical move here, putting the uh, entire uh, concept by white uh, into big question. And now after hg5, queen to g5, white plays knight to h3. This is a little bit strange, but white is gaining a tempo to attack the queen. And also the reason the knight goes to h3 and not to f3 is because after knight f3, first of all, it's walking the queen. And the second of all, uh, where, where does it go? next right because but from knight h3 it can go to f4 potential it can also you know go to g5 after the queen goes to g4 so knight h3 is by far the main move here and historically speaking here by far the main the main move is the move queen to e7 although recently there was a game and there were some games and the en modern engines point at alternative way of handling this position and that is the move queen to h4 and only after g3 going back to queen to e7 I will go back to the significance of this weakening slightly later. It has a very, very deep point that is not at all immediately obvious. But in order to understand it, let's first take a look and play, uh, see what happens after queen to e7. So here white has several options. First of all, they can play for knight to f4. Uh, it is actually more popular than the main, than the, than the main, than the stronger move queen to g4. I don't think it's stronger because after knight to f4, black plays c5 here. And after knight to b5, there is king d8. Uh, this uh, idea will be seen uh, later in the variation. It looks crazy to just move a king, but black is sidestepping uh, this uh, knight d6. Black is also avoiding king c7. And black definitely doesn't want to castle king side with the h5 open. So black is trying to make an argument that behind this blocked pawn center, uh, the king will be very safe. And for example, after d5, knight c6, both c5 and e5 are exposed. And... Yeah, it's not at all clear what's going on. Uh, the position seems complicated to play for both sides. I wouldn't necessarily think black, black has it all so bad here. More importantly here, after uh, knight to f4, knight c6 is also possible. Uh, it looks a little bit strange to put the knight in front of the pawn, but in these variations with the knight not being on f3, uh, the d4 pawn is slightly more vulnerable. So, for example, this move is aimed at preventing the move like queen g4, which it's still possible, for example, but then here you can either play g6 or you can go for complications with knight d4, castles long, knight f5, knight f to d5, e d5, knight d5, queen e5, and now bishop to b5. Um, 
I'm uh, it it's objectively okay for black the computer says it's fine but in a practical game this might be a little bit unpleasant I mean I would be very scared of some uh, rookie one and stuff um, yeah I don't think like it's playable but I think that the move g6 here is just much more practical now it seems that white just has a bad inferior version of the main lines where the knight will be much more active on g5 as we will soon see so I'm not 100% sure about why knight f4 is possible is so uh, popular. I think both c5 and knight c6 are very interesting options for black that leads to a very complicated fight. Uh, I think the move queen to g4 is uh, you know more logical and more more uh, standard here. So white is basically bringing the queen, uh, attacking the g7 pawn, and uh, preparing castle long. And here uh, black has several options here. If they play, and we'll analyze them all actually, so if they play king to f8 to defend, now it's a little bit risky to play with the king on the king side with the h5 open in all these lines. So what white should do here, white plays f4, what now, black should probably, I, I don't know, like they should probably try to create some counterplay, but the problem is that after knight to g5, uh, we are suddenly very solid on the king side, uh, and after h6, knight to b5, like the knight is coming here, there is this annoying pin, um, Knight of trick. I mean, we can always go back if we need to castle so long, but and Black's entire position looks very, very non-harmonious and very, very dangerous, to be completely honest. Uh, F7 might come under pressure at some point. It doesn't look too good for, for, for Black, something like this. Uh, if Black tries to do F5 here, uh, trying to exploit the fact that Queen is protecting the pawn, this does make the structure on the king side a little bit less flexible for Black and also weakens some dark squares. So here, uh, queen g3 is played. Uh, the queen is very nice. We place here, controlling g5, controlling g7. Knight c6, attacking the, uh, this pawn, knight to f4. Uh, this creates the threat of knight to g6, which has to be addressed. So knight f8, trying to cover it. Because if you take the pawn here, knight d4, then knight g6 is already unpleasant and it leads to some, yeah, like material losses and, and whatnots. Uh, so that's not to be recommended. I mean, I can maybe even we should start with queen to d3. It's complicated. I should now now that I look at it, queen. To, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit maybe worried about some knight c2 stuff. But yeah, I don't think that uh, that knight that this this complication should work that well for 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 black. For example, yeah, where do you even put the queen? I don't know. Yeah, like queen d8, knight here, knight c2, king d2, knight here. I mean, I can do queen g7. I can do rook h7. This looks pretty bad for black. So knight f8 is the main move, trying to prevent knight g6, but here castles, um, protecting d4, and here actually uh, white has quite some tactical ideas here. For example, if bishop to d7, there is this move knight f to d5, uh, e d5, knight d5, queen d8, queen to g7, and black is just done, like everything is coming, queen, uh, queen, queen h8, knight f6, this is just horrible. So here black should probably play something like queen to f7 to protect the d5 pawn, but after bishop to e2, there are now bishop uh, h5 ideas, knight d5 ideas. This looks dreadful for, for black. Honestly, I would never play something like this as black. And that is why after queen g4, the main move is g6 here, not moving the king to the king side and just protecting the pawn. The problem here is that after knight to g5, uh, here we see why it was maybe not so good to rush to f4 with the knight because the knight can be on g5, a threat on h7 pawn. And here, uh, what should black do? If they play uh, h6, this move is actually would work well if the pawn was on g3, but here uh, uh, white doesn't have to react to the threat. Uh, so bishop d3 is played because uh, there is this pin on the rook on h8. And actually there are some threats associated with knight takes uh, f7. Uh, so knight c6, knight f7. And here the sacrifice can be accepted. If queen to f7, there is bishop to g6. And if king to f7, there is bishop to g6. Um, and this looks pretty tricky for black, uh, for example, uh, yeah, if you play something like king to f8, uh, that will simply loses to rook h3, among other things. Uh, if you play king to g7, uh, then rook h5 is actually uh, very strong because it prevents queen to g5, and this king is always uh, threat in, in the threat of a discovered attack. And if you go king g8, then uh, bishop h5 is even stronger uh, because uh, queen to e6 is now a thing. And uh, yeah, 
uh, so queen g5 is not possible because queen to e6 and this is made very very shortly uh, which if the king was on g7 this wouldn't quite work that well but here this is just over so this i mean you don't have to be a genius to, to understand that this is very dangerous for for black and here the problem is that h5 doesn't quite work that well so if the pawn was on g3 like here then queen g5 would be obviously forced and that's actually one of the points of playing queen to h4, which I will reiterate it later. But here queen g3 um, is possible. And once again, like the sacrifice probably can't be accepted because after king f7, bishop g6, once again, everything loses like king f8, uh, loses to rook g8 with rook f4. Uh, king g7 loses to bishop to g5 now. Now there are no queen g5 ideas uh, with the h pawn not being on h6. g8, sorry, then bishop h5 also. Um, this is like white collects the second pawn uh, for the piece and also has an ongoing attack and even the end game after queen g7 queen f4 knight d2 5 d5 queen f5 queen f5 knight e5 probably that's like the black's best chance but now the material equality is restored uh, white has within development white has two dangerous pawns uh, arguably the better bishop, a better coordination. Maybe black can survive by finding some sort of series of only moves, but it looks extremely dangerous to try to do so in practice. I'm not sure if my, many black players would be able to do so in a practical game, and yeah, it just looks very, very risky to play this as, as black. Which is why maybe h5 here is a better move, probably a bit more reliable option, uh, just kicking the queen away and dealing preventing all these ideas and dealing with the attack on the h pawn. But now the problem is that after queen to f4, this knight will more or less be permanent here. And these two pieces on f4 and g5 are sitting very, very nicely. And black has a lot of dark square weaknesses. So um, white will play something like castles uh, long, at some point develop this bishop, and then probably undermine the structure with some g4 and try to break through on the king side. There is nothing like immediate as in the variation with h6 here. Uh, which basically leads to some sort of forced, forced uh, variation. H5 is much, much less forcing, but it simply provides white with a long-term compensation for the pawn, which is something that our and Chatard variation is known for and what uh, players who go for this variation are very much wel welcoming, I think. So that's probably why, I mean, I, I don't recall, you know, many people playing for bishop g5 these days at least not the top level but i also don't recall many people going for four bishop to e7 uh, I, I think that the four B, d e4 the so-called burn variation is a bit more popular these days i mean to be fair french defense the top level is not seen that often anyway but let alone this this particular line still uh, there are some relatively high high uh, level games that have reached this position and maybe one attempt that might try to revive this variation for black a little bit or that might breath some fresh air is this move queen to h4. Uh, this is one of those instances where maybe modern variations are trying to f uh, influence or fundamentally change the evaluation of well-known lines. Even my weaker engine like suggests this move and it was tested already in 34 games in the database. I think it was played by very talented uh, American youngster Christopher Yu once. Uh, so, what is the point of moving the queen to queen here? Like, first of all, uh, the queen prevents queen to g4 and knight f4 because of the hanging rook, and basically provokes provokes white to play something like g3. Uh, if knight b5, then white will one, black will once again play king d8. Uh, we have seen this motif earlier. And then, for example, after queen d2, a6, knight c3, c5, the computer actually insists this is completely fine for black. It was played in only a single game in my database, but it does seem that it has quite some potential, uh, especially as a surprise weapon. Of course, the most logical move here is the move g3. Like, why not, you know, gain a tempo and kick the queen away? But now after queen to e7, queen to g4, uh, once again, uh, knight f4 is possible, but then uh, play proceeds very similarly as in the line with the immediate queen to e7, either knight to c6 or even uh, c5. But queen to g4 is the move that probably deserves most testing. And here once again king f5 is probably not, not best because after knight g5, h6, f4. This was already seen uh, in variation with the pawn on g2. This looks very very risky for black because the king is stuck there, knight b5 might come, uh, castling uh, long will come and white has definite compensation. 
Uh, similarly, F5 is probably, I mean, F5 might make some sense here, to be honest, actually. Uh, because now queen g3 is not playable, but uh, still after queen to h5, uh, for example, g6, queen to h6, you get a lot of compensation, and if queen to f7, uh, you can even go for the endgame as, as white. So, uh, yeah, don't think f5 is a move that, 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 that will revive this variation. But the move that actually is very interesting is the move g6. And now after knight g5, h6. We have, if you remember, with the pawn on g2, this was not possible because uh, of the line starting with bishop to d3. But here after knight to c6, actually it transpires that knight f7, a move that was very tricky uh, in the previous variation simply doesn't work here. Because if black plays h5, which is the best move here, now queen g5 happens. Uh, if you play queen to g6, then queen to f7, and I'm, I'm surviving as, y, as black. And if queen to g5, uh, like I can't play queen to g3 because my pawn is there, so I have to go for queen to g5, but now after queen rook to g8, uh, removing the, the attack rook and defending the pawn, uh, queen to e7, king to e7, knight g5, knight d4, uh, you know, it is very complicated position, but black is hardly worse because black is currently a pawn up and the only weakness is g6 that is protected. It, I think this is like, this variation demonstrates the point of of of, uh, of this whole provoking the g3. By the way, uh, just to co correct myself, queen g5, knight g5 loses because now both e6 and uh, g6 are hanging. And if knight f8, we will play knight to a2 with knight f4. And this is much, much less harmonious for, for black. So that's not a way to go. Of course, in such a position, like the entire uh, position hangs by a threat, but somehow in all these variations, black is able to survive. And that is why instead of uh, going for the sacrifice, casting along is probably a better idea. And now uh, it's important to mention that here knight to d4 is not to be recommended because of knight f7. And not queen to d4, queen to g5. But uh, black should instead try to secure the position on the, on the king side with the move knight to f8. Uh, this prepares bishop to d7 and castles long. And now... Uh, the knight is kinda not so useful here on g5 because all these attempts uh, to play knight f7 failed. So after knight to f3, bishop to d7, queen to f4, uh, white is attacking the h6 pawn. And now black doesn't want to preserve it because then that would surrender the g5 square, but instead just castles long. And now after rook to h6, uh, black will, white regains the pawn, uh, but black is fully developed. And yeah, the position remains very, very complicated. I would still prefer white here. I was actually looking at this variation before one of my games in the recent Chronic and Open tournament because I had this file and I was debating whether to play this against young uh, FM Arthur De Winter, uh, uh, a game that will be soon be available on the channel. If it isn't already, I'm, I'm in the middle of filming it maybe. Um, I would still think it's easier to play as white here because uh, black is kinda cramped. But on the other hand, black is very solid and, you know, white does need to understand all this and uh, find all these moves and white does need to know that here the sacrifice knight f7 doesn't work. So, even though I wouldn't necessarily recommend uh, this particular variation uh, with uh, 4 bishop to e7 um, against bishop to g5, if I were to recommend something, I would probably recommend playing d takes c4, uh, which will be covered in the next video. But if I were to recommend playing something, I would probably recommend you to investigate this line with queen to h4 because I do think it has a big practical value and that it might come uh, as a big surprise to your opponents. Of course, if you are looking at this from white perspective, yeah, you also need to check this a little bit. I'm, I still think uh, with fairly straightforward moves, white can get a very reasonable position. Uh, like, at least practically, I don't think something like this is a position where white is risking much and I think it, in practice it is a bit more difficult to play this as, as, as uh, black than as white, but still, I mean, you have to be aware as white that this is probably the closest or the most direct attempt for black to equalize. And I don't know, maybe a better prepared opponent or somebody who has spent longer than myself analyzing this position might completely disagree with my evaluation or might find uh, a better, better way of handling it with black. So this brings me to the end of this video devoted to the Ave Canchatad variation and 4 bishop e7 in the French defense. Uh, in the next video we will continue our opening explorations by analyzing the burn variation with 4 d takes e4.
The material covered in this video is available in the Witcher study, the link will be provided below in the description. If you like the video, make sure to share it, like it, feel free to leave some comments, share it with friends, and also I would really appreciate it if you will uh, would subscribe to the channel. I can also invite you to check my Buy Me a Coffee profile, uh, even though the files and annotated files for these videos are now currently available to everybody, after a certain point, uh, all, uh, annotated files for only for the opening videos will be only be available to the uh, premium members or patrons or however you want to call it on buy me a coffee although i will uh, aim to keep the majority of my other content uh, free and available to everybody if you're interested you can check some of my other videos and i will be looking forward to seeing you in the next one thank you very much for watching this and see you soon bye bye